What's up guys, it's Ollie Steele here from Monuments and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. What's up, Ollie back again. This time I wanted to talk about some riffy kind of concepts that I find myself teaching a lot. And it's basically based around trying to break out of scale boxes. I think that's something a lot of people run into where you'll learn a, a shape or a scale or a mode or a sound or whatever, but you learn it in one place and that's not necessarily the most conducive place to like making riffs happen and traversing the fretboard and getting creative with it. So for example, if you have, if we take something like Fridge and Dominant, it's kind of Eastern thing. I like that sound, a lot of people like that sound. It's got that kind of Eastern vibe. It's in a lot of Monuments music and in a lot of metal, period. But a lot of the time, if you just learn a scale in its kind of run shape, like it's three note per string shape. But I find personally anyway, that kind of boxes me into that area and not a lot of riffs happen and it's more kind of licky and it's, I just feel a bit more anchored and not very free. So what I usually do, if I find a sound I like is instead of learning it this way, I'll learn it across, say the top string to start with. So just up into the 12th fret. So instead of this, we get. So already visually that's way more kind of applicable to what I, what I know how to do because I play metal and a lot of people who play metal are looking at their low string a lot. So already I've covered a lot of ground as well in terms of the, the neck, the places I can go. So what you might want to do after you find the notes you like, it doesn't have to be frigid and dominant, it's just what I like the sound of it. It's all about getting kind of fluent with it and comfortable with it. So instead of just going up and down it, you might want to try something simple like going up, up two notes, down one. Just any, any available pattern to use you might want to try. Remembering that you can always return to your low string because that's your, that's your root note, that's home. So it's easy to. It's easy to keep things flowing and pull-offs are a really good way to make things flow a bit more. And then once you've gone up and down it a few times and you're fairly comfortable with what frets are in your kind of sound, then you might go, okay, hey, if I know it on this string, then I know it on this string as well. So anything I do here, I can repeat an octave up immediately. So already things feel way kind of wider in terms of um, pitch, I guess, my intervallic kind of reach. Anything could be repeated like that. And then you might think, okay, I don't necessarily have to repeat the same shape up an octave. I could try inverting stuff. So you could try things like if you have a pattern like this, which again, none of this is groundbreaking. This is all just to get you kind of feeling like you're confident and fluent in a, in a sound in a more of a riffy context. So if it's something like that, you could say, okay, every second note could be up an octave. Already that sounds a bit more. You can do it the other way. You can do a high note, then a low note. You could start playing chords or dyads with them. You can invert those as well. It's a bit more riffy and it doesn't sound like I'm going up and down a scale, but you get the, the feel of the sound. And then everything I've done so far has been kind of consecutive in terms of where it lies in the scale, in terms of just going top to bottom. So you might want to try out, try out skipping different sections. You know what I mean? Instead of just doing the next consecutive part. And then you'll find that like some, some parts, if you're doing this kind of one high note, one low note thing, some bits sound better than others. Like this one, I like that. This one. Maybe I don't like that as much, but these guys here. They sound cool. So you kind of, you start to get inside of what potential chords might be in your sound as well.
So already, like, a, a lot of things are happening, and I feel like I can move around the sound a lot. But that was, bas that was mostly just on two strings. If you start to fit in the gaps and look at neighboring strings and find out what, what works for you. For example, you might not be able to pull off to the rest of the open strings. They might not lend themselves to the sound as well, but you can definitely start there and then pull off to something, in this case, a G, am I in G sharp? I'm in G sharp, something like that. So something like that. Those are just two chords that I know work in this kind of Phrygian sound. But I'm just playing in the single notes. So all, there's a few things running through my mind. I could play, I could just play chords, I could play single notes. Things feel a bit more fluent. Anything that... Things like that could happen. That already sounds a little bit funky, a little bit groovy. Already a little bit bored of sounding like I'm at an Egyptian bazaar, but still. So I guess the overarching idea is to try and feel like you feel fluid and confident and stuff, to the point where you can maybe just start improvising riffs. So I don't really know what I did there. I'm not saying none of those are phrases I've played before, but the order and stuff, that's just kind of what I'm feeling at the moment. I'm just kind of jamming. And I think I made a point to not necessarily play everything in the same order. And it's not the same, not being borrowed from the same shapes all the time. Yeah, try it out, see what happens. <laughs> 